Now I want to motivate the uh, concept of structures. Um, and structure arrays, which are just arrays of structures. Um, and the way I want to do this is via a, a although made up, um, a somewhat practical example. Um, and I'm actually going to start off with cell arrays, show how we implement this example in cell arrays, and use that to motivate uh, the need for a little different uh, data holding device. Uh, the cell arrays, and that's how I'm going to present structures. So the example I want to do is I'm going to, let's assume that I like collecting baseball cards and, or excuse me, basketball cards. And um, and so this is one of my basketball cards. Uh, it's uh, The name of the person is Huey Freeman and, um, and his position is guard and his number is 24. These characters are taken, of course, from the popular cartoon uh, boondocks. So what I have is I have information I need to store for this player. So this particular player once again is uh, first name is uh, Huey. So that would be best stored as a string. His last name is Freeman. Once again that would be best stored as a string. Um, his number is 24 store that as a type double and his position is guard which will store that as a character uh, and so let's look at down here and run this code and watch how I store that as a cell array so if you come down here on line 18 um, you can see I created a variable called player and that equals the cell array, note the, the braces around the outside, Huey is a string, Freeman as a string, the double number 24, and the character G. Um, and so now on line, on line 19, if I display what that, what that cell array looks like, you can see I have a cell. Um, first of all, you can see over here in the workspace, I have a one by four cell of all cells, and then you can see I have a cell with the string Huey, a cell with the string Freeman, and a cell with the number 24, and a cell with the character G. Now, if I want to access um, these, these pieces of information, I do that on line 20 here where I say first equals player, and I do braces one. And if you notice when I execute that, first is uh, a string down here. If I go up here in word place, notice first is of type char. Uh, I do last on line 21. That's string Freeman. Uh, next one is line 22. I do player uh, in braces 3. And you see over here that is a uh, number equals 24 and that's of type double. So now I'm accessing what's inside each cell and the same thing with position that's of type char uh, over here in the workspace and um, that is the letter G. So that's that's cool but as I assert here that's cool but what about the rest of the team? You know, how do I do this for the rest of the team? So let me adjust my code here bring up the rest of the team. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is create a cell array of cell arrays. And so if I bring up the rest of the team, uh, there they are, there are four of the members on the team, uh, and I'm going to put them into a cell array of cell arrays here on line 27. So um, I already have Huey put him in. Then I put the next player named Riley Freeman, number 13, um, position guard. Uncle Ruckus, number 10, position center. Robert Freeman, uh, number 34, position forward, indicated by the F. And Jen Rummy, uh, 
also uh, number 40, also position forward. So uh, that's the team. So now I have all of them in a cell array. So let's see how that works out in, Mat in MATLAB. It's a cell array of cell arrays. So team is a cell array with four cells in it. Okay. And so let's look, through, look at this in MATLAB. So I define it here on line 27. Now I also want to point out there's something new here, these three dots over here, called ellipses. Uh, when you, if you can't fit everything on one line in MATLAB, you can put these three dots in there and that tells MATLAB to extend you to the next line. And so that's what's actually happened here, is this has been extended to the next line. Um, and so we'll use that often, especially when we use things like cell arrays or structures or what have you, when it takes a lot, a lot, of, um, a lot of screen space to enter the, the data. So on line 27, I run this. You can see team is one, two, three, four, five. It's got five cells in it, and each one of those cells is a one by four of type cell. So over here you see in the workspace you see team, one by five cell, class cell. So this is a cell array of cells. So it's a Ziploc bag with other Ziploc bags in it. Uh, if I wanted to access the third cell in the item, or the, uh, the team, I notice on line 30, team indexed at 3, 1, 2, 3, or even down here, 1, 2, 3, is a cell. and is a cell of 1 by 4. So it's a cell that contains a cell of 1 by 4. Um, on line 31, I skipped line 31. If I wanted to if I ran line 31, I would get an error here. And what it is, is if I say, okay, give me this thing on line 30, team in the third location. That would be this cell. It won't be what's in the cell. It's just the cell itself. And so if I tried to access the second thing, the second cell in that cell, um, it does. that's not what I want. I want the second value that's in, or I want the second cell that's inside the value in that cell, or the contents of that cell. So that's sort of confusing there. Um, you got to keep in mind um, these are containers, and so team of three is a container that only has one thing in it. And when I try to access the second thing in there that's outside of the index, there's only one thing inside team of three, and that's this entire cell. Um, and so that's why that gives an error. On line 32, though, I then go inside that cell in three, the actual contents here, right, which has four cells in it, and access the second thing in there. Um, so if I go here on line 32, you notice I access the second thing inside this cell array here, and that is the cell which contains ruckus. Um, and then if I wanted to access that string itself, ruckus, it would be the second con it's the second contents inside the contents in the third cell in, in, in the team. And so I get that. Now, if I had to do this uh, and use this way, this means to manipulate my, my information here or my collection of players cards, uh, I really got to pay attention to indexing. Um, and it just it gets sort of sort of convoluted. I've got to pay attention to indexing. I've got to pay attention to moving the cells. Am I using the contents of the cells? So that can get sort of confusing. So what I motivate now is the use of something called a structure. And so uh, I'm going to show this here. Uh, going to have to let me adjust my code here. So what I want to do here is show this thing called a, a structure. Now, what it does is it indexes not by number, but by name. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, create me a variable called player. 
much like I did um, up here on line 19. Create me a variable called player, right? And and give it a, a field of first, last number and position. Except for up here, I'm 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 indexing by these numbers one, two, three, four. Down here, I'm actually saying player dot first means player. I can index um, with the word f i r s t here equals Huey. Player dot last equals Freeman. Player dot number equals 24, and player dot position equals G. So that way, I don't have to use numbers and remember what they mean. I can just, if I want the first name, I use first. Or the second name is last. If I want a number, I use number. Position, I use position. So let's let's watch this in action here in MATLAB. So uh, if you come over here and you look, what happens is just by doing that dot first and setting it equal to something. If you look over here in the workspace, it says player is a one by one of type structure. Right? So this notation indicates to MATLAB that I want a structure. So then I do it again, um, and I do it again, and I do it again. So now what I've done is I've built this structure called player that has four fields in it. One field is first, one is last, one's number, and one's position. So now here on line 46, let's see what that looks like. So I hit 546, and you notice it looks different than we've done it before. It says player equals, and then it has over here in nice columns and rows, first colons, first being the index, excuse me, not the index, but the field name, field name first, value Huey, field name last, with a colon, value Freeman, field name number, value 24, field name position, value G. Okay, that is how you set up and and create a structure okay um, that's one way to do it that's one method called the individual field entry method okay um, next let's look at another method on how you enter um, structure so I'll finish this execution here come back comment that out uncomment this This line. Okay, so the way the individual field works is I go variable name dot field name and then equals the, the actual value I want to put in. And I can do as many of those as I want. Um, the group, what I call the group field entry uh, method, is I use this, um, this keyword called struct. And then inside the parentheses of struct, I say I do field name, field value pair. So these are pairs. They come in together. So I do the field name, then the field value, then the next field name, then the next field value, and so on and so forth. So if you see here on line, um, on line 54, I have player, which is the variable name again, equals the keyword struct, which says make a structure. And then I give it the field name first, and then the value I want to put in that Huey, the field name last, value I want to put in that Freeman, field name number, value I want to put in that 24, the field name position, and the value I want to put in that uh, character G. And so when I run this, you're going to see it looks exactly like what we did up here above in terms of the structure that it creates. So I run this, step through. Um, once again, I us get a line 54. You look over here in the workspace. Players are one by one structure. Um, step through again. This is what player looks like here on line 56. And then if I want to look at this uh, player dot first is uh, Huey. Player dot last, this is accessing the values. Player dot last is Freeman. Player dot number on line 59 is 24. And player dot position on line 60 is G. So that's how you create up here. We did two methods of creation. We did the uh, individual field entry. That's how you create either that way or this way here on line 54 using the group field entry. And then this is how these two, this is how you access. If I want the whole structure, uh, I do just the name of the variable. And then if I want fields in the structure, I do dot 
and then the field name. And that accesses the data uh, in the structure. 